guys, welcome to the How to Have a Successful Family and Healthy Life Without Sacrificing Business or Career Success. Now, who's this for? This is for goal-oriented families who are passionate about health and one another. This is also for families that want healthy relationships, but you're struggling to find the time to have it all. This is also for families that are committed to personal growth and that are willing to do whatever it takes to grow. This is for married or single parents that are overwhelmed and feel like you just don't have time to do it all. Let me ask you a question. How many of you have ever felt this way before? You want to be a healthy family. You want healthier relationships, but you just, maybe you just don't know how to do it. Or, you, you know, you're committed to personal growth and you're really willing to do whatever it takes. How many of you are in that state of mind right now? Or maybe you're overwhelmed and you feel like you just don't have the time to do it all. It's also for families that love each other, but are struggling to communicate and spend quality time together. This is also for broken families that are ready for healing, that not only are you ready for healing, you're in need of healing. Maybe your family's broken right now. Maybe you have pain in your house and tension and stress. Maybe your wife's already left you. Maybe, maybe your kids don't even talk to you right now. Maybe when you walk in your home, it feels cold. And there needs to be change so that you can have peace and harmony. Now, in the next 60 minutes, I am going to show you how to have massive success in your business. Wouldn't that be amazing? How many of you out there want to have success in your business and career? But to do it without neglecting your health, even if that seems impossible right now. Now, I, now listen, I've been where you're at. In fact, I, I'm sitting here thinking that if I would have heard this five years ago, five years ago, I'd massive success, but it came at the expense of my health. And I'm going to share my story with you. I was at one time over 40 pounds overweight. I was always sick. I, I barely had the energy and I wanted success. I had success, but I was quite frankly neglecting my health. And if somebody would have introduced this webinar to me five years ago, I would have already turned them out because I didn't believe that would be possible. But in the next 60 minutes, I'm also going to show you how to spend more quality time with your family without feeling guilty about work that still, wouldn't that be amazing to be able to actually go to your daughter's soccer game and not feel guilty about the work that needs to be done? Or go, go out with your family on a walk and be in the moment and not feel that weight of guilt because you know that you promised your boss that you would you would have it done or you promised that customer you would call them back or you took all this work home and you know you've got still 23 emails you have to return but I want to help you in the next 60 minutes how to actually spend more quality time with your family without feeling guilty okay in the next 60 minutes I'm also going to show you how to live with the deepest level of peace peace of mind get more rest Take more vacations? Wouldn't that be amazing? Can you, can you imagine yourself right now sitting on a beach somewhere and your kids are playing and your wife is laying right next to you and you're just enjoying your, imagine you're in the mountains and you're taking a hike or you're, you're up at night and you guys are all sitting in the hot tub or maybe you're, you're somewhere to a place you've always wanted to be, just relaxing. And I'm going to show you how to actually do this and have more energy and still be extremely productive at work. Now, I didn't believe that was possible. I didn't know what it was like to have peace and, and actually rest. I remember even trying to lay in a hammock for 10 minutes felt like an eternity because I'm like, I, oh my God, I, I, you know, I got to finish this. I got to do this. And even like taking a week off, like, wait a minute, hustlers don't take a week off. Are you kidding? Vacations is for people that are broke or people that have fake wealth. 
and you know, depending on energy drinks and, and coffees and pretty much living in the line at Starbucks just so I can make it through the neck through the day and all that I had to do. I'm gonna show you how to get to that place of peace because I'm there and I didn't even believe it was even humanly possible, but I'm so glad that I did it. And then also how to create an atmosphere in your home so your children, they feel safe, they feel confident, they feel comfortable. In other words, your home is, is now becoming the happiest place on earth. They even love being home more than they love Disney World. They even love home more than they love any place on earth. How many of you think that would be absolutely just refreshing to have your home be a place that has an atmosphere of love and a place where your kids, you can just tell they feel confident and they feel secure. So in the next 60 minutes, I'm also going to show you how to do all of this without feeling like you're wasting time, losing money, or neglecting the people that depend on you to deliver and produce. And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm actually going to prove to you that you, even though you might sit there and think, you know what, this is not even possible. You don't know my workload. You don't know my to-do list. You're right. I don't know it. But I know what mine was. And I know that I can help you get to the place where you can do everything with your family, your business, and your health without feeling like you're losing money or neglecting people or sadly even wasting time. Now, here's my promise to you. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to give you a simple, step-by-step, -step, practical strategy for having it all. I mean, all. Oh, I'm talking about everything. I'm talking about freedom. I'm talking about wealth. I'm talking about unbelievable peace, happiness, energy, quality time with your family. And I'm going to show you how to do this without losing your health and family in the process or, or even going out of your mind. I'm going to actually show you how to do it. And I'm going to give you the steps today. So if you stay to the end, I got a very special surprise. You see that little present? I can't tell you what it is right now. I, I do know this. If you stay to the end, I'm going to show you how to at least get a free video on how to have more energy that I taught literally to thousands of people. And my top three health webinars that nobody can find because they're not out there. I keep them hidden and private only for very special people. And I'm going to give it to you at the end, also along with an unbelievable gift that is really going to help you. And I'm going to give it to you for free. So I have a few basic rules. Number one, this is, has nothing to do with a diet or I'm not going to sell you any pills or shakes. This is no four hour work week. No, no do nothing and have success. No super mom or super dads. It's not what this is about. This is no judgment here. This is the judgment-free zone, my friends. This is where you can be yourself, bring all your baggage, all your problems, all your pressures, all your mistakes. Hang out with me and you'll feel no judgment because believe me, I can relate to many of you out there that feel overwhelmed by the mistakes that you've made and I promise you I'm not gonna judge you. And last but not least, Neither my results or clients' results are typical at all. So, in other words, this is no overnight fix. What this is going to be is a step-by-step -step process that you can take that's very simple no matter whether you live in Japan or California, whether you have one kid or five kids, whether you just got married or your wife just left you, it doesn't matter. I'm going to show you how to have it all. Now, real quick like my friends. I want you to do yourself a favor and give yourself the opportunity to focus finally 100% on you. In other words, listen, I know you see, talking about having it all, you're probably sitting there thinking, man, there's no way I can sit through an hour webinar. I could, I could return 10 calls. I could send out 15 emails. I could do this. I know, I know, I feel you. 
But I need you to do me a favor and eliminate the distractions. Not just the TV and the computer and the iPad, but even the distractions in your mind. I want you to right now get in the moment, be 100% present with me for you and your family and your health and your future. Okay? Now let me ask you a question. Does this sound like you? Do you often feel guilty because you're not spending enough time with your family and kids? Do you come home late at night and feel guilty or frustrated because you didn't do your workout? Have time to eat healthy? How many people that I know, believe me, I was once there, I remember going like six months without working out. I mean, I remember like going almost a year without eating vegetables or, you know, maybe, maybe a little bit of broccoli and cheese soup, <laughs> if that counts. But I remember the frustration. I remember feeling frustrated because I wanted to do it, but I just couldn't find the time. I remember feeling the guilt of, man, I need to get to the gym. And I would see all these other people and they would get up early and they would go work out. And here I was 40 pounds overweight and, and just not having energy. How about this? Do you ever feel like you're working so hard that you never have me time? Me time? What's me time? Me time is, is something that is missing many of our lives, the time to do the things you really love and want to do. I mean, when's the last time you've enjoyed uh, a little bit of downtime to maybe go play a game of golf with a buddy without feeling like the weight of the world on your shoulders? Or maybe, mom, when's the last time you let dad keep the kids for an hour or two and you went and enjoyed a pedicure without thinking about the hundred things you need to do? You ever just feel like you're working so hard, you, you're just never able to really have any me time? And that can be overwhelming. That can be actually frustrating. That can deplete energy from us. That can actually cause us irritation and actually anger. So let me ask you this. Do you ever see people at work or on Facebook that are living the kind of life that you really want? I mean, so much so, you're like, you're almost ready to unfriend them. They look so happy. <laughs> Or you just have no idea how they do it. How, these people you see, they're, they're always positive. They're always happy. They're, they're, they're extremely successful, but yet they're, they're always at all their kids' plays. You know, seems like every time you turn around, they're posting a picture of them being on a date with their, their wife or they're out taking a family walk and they're smiling. And you just look at them and you think, man, how do they do that? Or do you, you ever just feel like you're working way too hard in your business? I mean, yeah, you feel good about it, of course. Who doesn't feel good when you work hard? But you're putting in so many hours that it's, it's, it's literally burning you out. It's been so long since you've had true rest and fun. And you're just at that place where you're depleted. You're, you're out of strength. You've lost your edge, your fight, your passion, your, your vibe. You ever just feel like you, you can't have a healthy body? Time for yourself and the energy? Look, I know people that have time to spend with their family, but they don't have the energy. By the time they get home, they just want to sit in front of the TV. Or you ever feel like it's too late? Maybe you're sitting there and you're thinking, you know what? You don't know the amount of mistakes that I've made. It's too late for me. I can't turn it around. Maybe your wife's already left you. Maybe your wife's already, your husband's already moved in with, with, with his secretary. Or, or maybe your kids don't even talk to you anymore. Or maybe you've, you've already sat in that dark living room at night as your kids left for college and, and you look back and wonder where the time went. I mean, even just talking about it, I'm, I'm getting emotional thinking about how that must feel. Because I know what it's like to look in the mirror and face my mistakes and my regrets. It's definitely not a good feeling, is it? Let me ask you a question. So the real problem is this. Well, not ask you a question. Let me tell you something, actually. The real problem is, has nothing to do with anything I've shared. The real problem is that you don't have time. The real problem is not that you don't have an understanding husband or wife. The real problem is 
Not that there's not enough hours in the day or you've got a, you know, a boss that doesn't understand or you've got a, a disorganized team. The real problem is that you haven't made the shifts yet. Now, once you make these shifts that I'm going to give you in this webinar, step-by-step step, practical shifts that you can make, you're going to have peace. See, I'm, st I'm still emotional thinking about the mistakes here. You're going to have peace. What do I mean by peace? I'm talking about that guilt's going to be gone, that, that feeling of tension. It's going to be gone. Once you make these shifts, you're going to have success in your personal life, your health, your business, your family, all of it. And you're going to have massive success in your career without gaining weight. How many of you think it would be amazing to not feel ashamed about your body? Because you feel good. You feel strong. You feel healthy. And I'm going to show you that once you make these shifts, you're going to have massive success without neglecting your family and working so much that you never have time to play and enjoy life. In fact, once you make these shifts, everybody's going to be like, whoa, what happened to Joe? He's so happy. Look at him. He's taking the afternoon off to actually go enjoy a game of golf. Or look at him. He's, he's at his daughter's soccer game. Wow. Look at him. He's taking his wife on a date. Once you make these shifts, you will have more time for exercise, eating healthy, that's right, and still have the energy to get it all done because you don't feel sluggish, you don't feel tired, you don't feel moody, you feel good, you've exercised, you've eaten clean and healthy and man, you have so much energy that everybody's looking at you like, man, if I, if I could just have half your energy or if I could bottle your energy up, you'll take more family vacations. That's right. You'll, you'll have more rest and, and most importantly, create more family traditions. Once you make these shifts, you'll live with clarity of mind and have time for yourself without feeling guilty or losing your career. Because I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, yeah, but if I took more vacations, if I rested more, if I, if I, you know, if I exercised or if I took time to eat healthy, because you know, eating healthy takes a little bit longer than, than McDonald's, of course. You're probably sitting there thinking, yeah, but then, then I'm going to lose my, my career. I'm going to feel guilty because you don't know how to find fulfillment and happiness outside of work. But I'm going to help you make these shifts. Now, real quick, for you that don't, you're probably thinking, who is this guy? Where's this, I mean, what, who, who, like, somebody maybe sent this to you, or maybe you found this on Facebook, or maybe a friend forwarded it to you. Well, my name is Matt Maddox. I am from St. Petersburg, Florida. Best known, though, as the world's greatest dad. I mean, right there. That's what I'm known for all over the world. People tell me I'm the greatest dad. Even other dads have crowned me and said, dude, I got to hand it to you. I thought I was a good dad till I met you. So I'm glad to, I'm glad to hold that title, my friends. I have the, the heavyweight belt of the world's greatest dad. But I'm also a strategic relationship expert, master life coach, and highly sought after international speaker. I've hosted over 120 live events with a total of over 32,000 registered attendees. So I've had some fun through the years helping people and training and motivating and coaching. I'm also the author of best-selling health books, the healing power of juicing, and just juice it, baby. Not baby, but just juice. I got to throw baby in there, right? And co-founder of My Health Coach and Jumpstart Your Business. And I'm also the founder and leader of Refresh Your Family Retreats. There's the two books that I wrote. They're on Amazon, the healing power of juicing and just juice it. Just juice it. I, I just feel like we should create a rap song about that. It's just got that ring to it. I've got one that I created, and I thought about doing it for you, but my son begged me not to, so I guess I'll save it for another time. <laughs> so 
I'm also the dad to this amazing, unbelievable, out of this world entrepreneur, Caleb Maddox, who was recently voted as the top 20 most motivational people in the world. So there he is. There's us together there. And so I, I have it all. I mean, when I tell you I have it all, my friends, I literally have it all. I didn't, I didn't used to. And so can you. So in my journey, I've done a lot of things right. I mean, look, I can, I can literally give you some, some things that I have done that worked. Okay. But I've also done a lot of things wrong. And I'm going to share some things that are very personal, that are very transparent, that are extremely um, challenging for me to share because they're so emotional. I'm going to, yeah, of course, you know, we all talk about what we do right, but so few of us share our mistakes and our failures. Um, I'm going to do that for you today. I'm going to, I'm going to let them, I'm going to take the mask off because yeah, I know I already said I'm the world's greatest dad, but, um, I'm going to just be real with you today, my friends. So I had to learn the hard way, actually. The hard way was, I believe nothing bad would happen to me because I was out doing good works and I was so, see, I'm also, I didn't put this in my little intro bio, but I'm also a founder of a missions movement. And um, that's why my son is so amazing. He's been on over 53 missions trips. And here I was going across the world, serving people and doing good works. And I didn't believe anything bad would happen to me. And besides, I was young. I was in my 30s and, you know, I was just hustling and making money and changing the world. But I was also 40 pounds overweight, sick a lot because of the high stress lifestyle that, that often left me feeling sluggish, exhausted, irritable, and, and quite frankly, I had a, a secret battle with depression. And I, I literally, looking back, it was all because I was overweight, I never exercised, I didn't eat healthy, and I was always sick. And I actually had some some, some very frightening experience as a result of this that, that taught me some life lessons. Quite frankly, I learned it the hard way. And I assumed that Caleb would be fine with my long hours and trips far from home because, hey, look, at the end of the day, I was a good dad, right? I never beat my son. I always fed him good. We, you know, we played ball, you know, spent a lot of time with him when I was home. And, you know, but I, and I excused my bad habits with excuses like, you know, every successful person has to pay the price and sacrifice if they really want to have massive success and wealth. You know, so when I look at where I was five years ago in this mindset of, hey, nothing bad would ever happen to me. I'm helping so many people. You know, here I am, 40 pounds overweight, secret battle with depression, irritable, sluggish, exhausted. I had these bad habits that really were excuses because I thought, hey, you know what? This is the price you pay. You got to work 20 hours. You've got to put in the time. You got to sacrifice. And let me just tell you what happened. I'll tell you my story. You see that man right there? That's my grandfather. Standing next to that picture, is, and I'm looking at it right now with a big old smile, is the purple heart that he gave me. One of the most amazing moments of my entire life is the night that he gave me that purple heart. See, I had two experiences where I was in the emergency room with what they thought were heart attacks. Right? Heart attacks, 30 something years old and I'm in the emergency room and they're doing all kinds of tests. And every time the doctor would come back to me, he would say, Matt, you've got to rest. You have too much stress. You're, you're putting yourself at risk. I mean, this is in the emergency room and a doctor telling me, you, if you don't slow down, you're going to be dead. I remember this moment is, I remember being in 
a similar situation. My grandfather, who I love so much, he, he had a heart attack and he, he nearly died from it. And we were in the hospital, I'll never forget this, I was sitting there with him and we were just talking and he was, he was frightened, he thought he was gonna die. And the doctor came in and he just did his you know, normal procedure and, and began to just talk through, you know, just, he was writing on the clipboard, you know, checking, checking different things. And my grandfather asked him, doctor, am I gonna live, am I gonna be okay? And the doctor just kept writing on the clipboard and basically, quite frankly, ignored him. And um, so I, I spoke up and I said, doctor, if you don't mind me asking, How's my grandfather doing? Is he going to be okay? And he looks at my grandfather and he said, well, Mr. Maddox, let me ask you a question. Do you want to live? And he was like, well, yes, sir, I do. He said, well, you know, I hear that every day. He goes, every day, you know, people come in here and, you know, they have heart attacks and they have near-death experiences and they make all these promises that they're going to change. And he said, you know, let me just tell you something. He goes, you can live if you want to live. He goes, most likely you're not going to. He goes, I'm just going to be honest with you. Most people never make it the second time. And he said, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you want to live, I don't ever want you to forget what I'm about to tell you. And I mean, I was sitting there listening to every word and I'm thinking that he's about to give like all these like, you know, words of wisdom and whatnot. And he said, Mr. Maddox, change or die. I mean, I literally will never forget that the longest day I live. And I remember that those words, change or die. And I was sitting there after my heart attacks, thinking of in my heart attacks. I mean, let me clarify, I did not have a heart attack, but I was in the emergency room with what they thought was a heart attack because of the stress that I was under. And I remember even all of this, you would think, you would think that those experiences of, of my grandfather knowing that it's hereditary, knowing the words, the piercing words that, that the doctor spoke, change or die, you would think I would be this help nut, but I wasn't. And I'll never forget I was actually, I went to the Philippines. I was on a missions trip. I flew like 26 hours. I got home and I turned around in two hours and I flew to Canada with my cousin Travis and this gentleman by the name of Rick DeWitt, who I call him Papa Rick. He's kind of like an adopted pops. We're very close. And I was so sick. I mean, I had never felt that sick. But I, I couldn't cancel. There were 1,500 people waiting on me to come speak. And I was on my seventh trip in a row, seven weeks back to back. And here I am. Remember, I'm succeeding. I'm making money. I'm making a difference. And I'm so sick that I get there on a Friday afternoon. We're in Canada. And I'm laying in the hotel room and I told Travis and Papa Rick, I said, guys, I'm so sick. I can't even move. I said, I, I feel, I've never felt this bad. I was like, I don't even know if I could go speak. And they said, well, just rest. And then, you know, we'll see how you feel when it, when it comes time. And so, you know, as it progressed towards, towards the time for us to go speak, I looked at my cousin Travis and said, dude, I hate to throw this on you. You're going to have to speak tonight. I was like, I feel so sick. I can't even move. I remember them walking out the door and I remember laying in that hotel room. I was the loneliest human being on planet earth. I felt so exhausted, so sick that I just laid in that bed and I wept and I thought, Matt Maddox, you've got to get it under control. And I fell asleep and when I woke up, it must have been, I don't know, 15 minutes later, I couldn't breathe. My throat had swollen. I literally couldn't breathe. I couldn't swallow. I had a panic. I was panicking. Called 911, uh, was rushed to the hospital. 
When I walked in the emergency room, nurse took one good look at me and they rushed me back. The doctor stuck an Effie pin in me. They started working on me. And I'll never forget this. When I, when I finally was in the recovery room, the doctor walked in and he said, Mr. Maddox, he says, so glad to see you, sir. He goes, I understand that you have a son back home. And like it hit me. It totally hit me that, you know, this was a serious situation. He looks at me. I could just tell by the look in his eyes. And he said, you should consider yourself a lucky man that you're alive right now. Because if you would have waited 30 minutes, 30 minutes, you would have been dead. And he said, um... If I were you, I would get home to that boy of yours and I would make up my mind that I'm going to change. And he said, you've got way too much stress in your life. And, and I was sitting there with my cousin and, and, and he looked at me and I looked over at Papa Rick and the, the, the raw reality that I was 30 minutes from death, all I could do was how fast could I get on a plane and get to my son? And I'll never forget, I got on that airplane and I flew home and it was a long flight home. It felt like, it felt like three days. So all I wanted to do was I wanted to get home and I wanted to see my little boy. And all I can tell you is I, I will never forget um, being at his kindergarten graduation. I remember the day that he graduated kindergarten and I remember him running up to me and I remember him just grabbing me. I remember that moment. I remember the gratitude that I felt because I had friends that died. I had friends that actually died. I had three of some of my closest friends actually died of heart attacks. A couple of friends died of cancer. And I've actually seen, I've been to funerals where they had to like literally pull their kids off the casket. I know what that's like. And I just have to share with you in this webinar that I made up my mind on that flight from Canada to Tampa, Florida, that I was going to become the greatest dad in the world. But yeah, it's easy to say, right? Of course, when the doctor looks at you and he says, you were 30 minutes, if you'd have waited 30 minutes, you'd have been dead. I can't even imagine my son having to go to my funeral because I was too busy chasing success. And I was too busy changing the world and helping people. Now, don't get me wrong. Remember, I told you I was a good dad. But there were three shifts that I had to make in order to get to this place where I could be the dad that he so needed me to be and still fulfill my mission in helping people and following my passion, making money, and ultimately having success. So the first thing I had to do was I obviously had to get refocused. I mean, I had, see the danger of drifting is most people don't know how far they drift. Most of you watching right now, your life and health is so out of control, you don't even know just how far you've actually drifted. That's why I want you to do me a favor and, and take this serious of refocusing. Have you ever just felt so distracted and overwhelmed that, that you're forgetting some of the most important things in your life? So I'm going to give you a tip. Tip number one is get extremely clear about what you want. In other words, I did this. I sat down and I thought, wait a minute, this isn't what I want. I want freedom. I want to be able to spend quality time with my son. So what you have to do is we have to ask ourselves the question, what would life look like if it were 100% on our terms? What would it look like? What would it look like if you were in control of your life? Now, the second tip that I had to do or that I would suggest, and I did this, was I got serious about my values and my non-negotiables. I mean, I got serious about my schedule, my time the things that I valued, my relationship with my son and how I was going to do life and what I would say yes to and what I would say no to. 
Now I'm going to give you real quick just a little exercise to do and I'm going to have to go through this quite fast the rest of this webinar because I don't want to take up too much of your time but I want to make sure you get this. Make a list of all the things that you value and that you would die for. And then make a list of the areas in your life that you refuse to compromise. Now, I had to make a decision, okay? My decision was, and you know this, to become the best. I'm talking about the best. Remember what my goal? My goal became I was going to be the best dad on planet Earth. There was not going to be a dad on this planet that was going to be a better dad than I was. I was going to succeed at being dad. So to become the best in the world at anything requires focus. It requires commitment, massive action, okay? Then here are some of the best, here are some of the things that I did to become the best dad in the world. I made the decision. Now what I did after my decision is I made a commitment. Now this, this felt totally like extreme to me, undoable, not possible. But I actually took a year off from travel. And I made up my mind that I would never again after that year travel more than four nights away, four nights a month away from my son. Now I don't travel away from him at all. And then I made up my mind that I made a commitment that I was going to see Caleb every single day and spend quality time with him. We started a Friday morning tradition where we went out every every Friday morning at 5 a.m. and we fed the homeless and then we would go to Cracker Barrel for breakfast before school. I would literally turn off my, school, my, my phone after school until he went to bed. I mean, this you talk about a commitment because I walked away from easy money traveling and now I had to start a new business, new sources of income. And you're talking about like picking him up from school at 4 o'clock and keeping my phone off until 9 p.m.? That took extreme commitment. I made up my mind I was going to write Caleb a letter every day. So every day and when he would go to school, he would open up his lunchbox and there would be a letter from dad. <laughs> and I made up my mind, you know what? From this day forward, there's going to be a lot of laughter and memories. And I was going to also master being in the moment. Start serving people in need weekly and never, ever, ever, ever miss one of his baseball games. Now, I'm going to just show you some pictures of, of this. This is a letter. That's what a letter looked like that I would send in his lunchbox every day. I would put a picture of a memory we had together. There's us at a baseball game. <laughs> Isn't that cute? And I would write him a very empowering letter and there we are at our Friday morning Cracker Barrel tradition. And here we are giving out sleeping bags to the homeless. This changed our life. We started going out and just serving and making a lot of memories, feeding uh, the poor. There's a family that lived in a tent on one mattress, two beautiful kids and mom and dad. There's a mom and her two boys that lived in their car. And then we started every Christmas morning and every thanks, literally every Thanksgiving morning and every Christmas morning, Caleb and I take Starbucks coffee to the homeless under the bridge. And it is so much fun. We've become like family with these people. It's unbelievable. There's Caleb with all of his homeless buddies and we'll even take the homeless out to eat and just go connect with them. There we are at a veterans hospital. You know what we did? You know what we did when I refocused? I thought, wait a minute. We're going to have a lifestyle of giving and serving and loving people. This was the pathway to happiness for us and freedom. There's Caleb um, hanging out with all these kids. We would go bring kids candy and all kinds of cool fun stuff right there. Going into battered woman shelters and we would hang out with these teenagers. Go take them out to pizza and go into neighborhoods and bring toys and then, not only all that, I made up my mind, you know what? I'm going to be the best dad in the world. I'm going to teach my son how to give, but I'm also going to give to him. And we started going to ball games, and we would get good seats. There we are at the, the Bucks football game, the Lightning hockey game, uh, the, the Rays a baseball game. And we just started having a blast going and spending quality time together 
doing things and what a difference this made. And what I didn't realize is how significantly my decision would impact the quality of my son's life and mine. So the results, here's the results. Now let's talk about it for a minute. Caleb wrote his book by his first book by age 12. He also was interviewed on national TV, Good Morning Australia, that had over 8 million views. He was featured in Forbes, Huffington Post, Entrepreneur Magazine. He founded his own company called Kids for Success. He's earned over $100,000 by age 14. He has over 85 speaking requests across the world. Over 47,000 people on his Facebook fan page. Actually, that was, uh, that was a couple of months ago. Now, it's at over 100,000 people. And he's had four viral videos get over 2.9 million views. And he was recently, as I've already said, voted in the top 20 most motivational people in the world. Now, look at those results. Imagine if you could shift and you could refocus to the place where you get committed as a mom, as a dad, not to just providing food and clothes, committed to taking care of your health and your finances so that you can have the freedom to be able to spend time with your kids and do some of the things that you saw in these pictures. There he is in the article. He was voted right there. Look at the write-up. Caleb Maddox. There are some amazing people on this list, but none as young as Caleb Maddox. An author and CEO at just 14 years old. This motivational speaker and author, Keys to Success for Kids, is just getting started. And he's already raising the bar with his motivational videos. Isn't that cool stuff? There's his book, his first book by age 12. And also, you're not going to believe this, but Caleb is speaking in, in Dallas in February. And the other speaker that's speaking with him is going to be either Tony Robbins or Mark Cuban. Is that cool or what? There he is with Kevin Harrington. Uh, he was on Kevin Harrington's show. They did a speaking event together. And they are now in business together. So that's pretty amazing. So... Here's the deal. To be the best in every area of your life, I want you to take a look. What's most important is physical, spiritual, family, business. And they're all in no order because they're all important. You've got to take care of your body, your spiritual life, your family life, and your business. So I want you to go all in so that you can have it all. Wouldn't it be, wouldn't it be awesome to have a successful family, your spiritual life where you have happiness and peace and fulfillment your physical life, you feel good about your body and success in your business. Now, let me tell you a story about Robbie. Robbie came to me and what a great guy. One of the greatest human beings literally that I have ever met. He was very successful in business, but he was unfulfilled. He was about 40 pounds overweight. He was also frustrated because he wasn't spending quality time with his family. And like many, he was at his breaking point. I remember our first call. You know, he was just at that place. You know, he had his success, but what was what was missing was what? Is what I talked about in the beginning of this webinar, how to have it all or how to how to have it all without losing your health and family, right? How to have the business success without losing your your health and family. So, here's the good news though. Robbie, we started doing some coaching. I started helping him. I helped him do these three things right here. I took him through a step-by-step -step process. He started coming home every night for dinner. He made the commitment. I said, Robbie, I want you to commit. I mean, listen, don't settle. Don't allow yourself to think that good is okay. I want you to commit. Go all in on this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? There he is with his family. And the good news is I talked to Robbie literally today. He's doing better than he's ever done. He's, his, his health is back. He lost the weight. He spent an unbelievable quality time with his family. And guess as a result, he's making even more money than he's ever made in his business before. Now I'm going to tell you, Robbie didn't believe it was possible. Just like you and I, you know, you know, to, to be successful in business requires waking up at four, five in the morning, answering every call, you know, uh, dealing with customers, customers first, right? Dealing with clients and 
demands and working late, sometimes not getting home till one in the morning, getting back up at 4 a.m. But the good news is, is Robbie got refocused and as a result, he had success. Now, I'm going to give you another quick tip and that's for you to get brutally honest with yourself. Now, here's what I did. When I was in the middle of refocusing my life, I had to get honest. I had to get naked, brutally honest. And what I did is I sat down in every area of my life and I asked myself these three questions. What do I need to keep doing? And I literally made a list. I made a list of everything in my life that I was doing right. Then, what do I need to stop doing? So I wrote down everything in my life that I felt like I needed to stop doing. Third thing is, what do I need to start doing? And I did it as a dad, I did it as a businessman, I did it in my health. Now, so I'm gonna give you my list, here it is. What did I need to stop doing? Well, I remember I was 40 pounds overweight, so I stopped drinking Coke and soda. I was drinking, you know, probably a two liter of Mountain Dew a day. I was eating all kinds of junk, sugar, I stopped eating sugar, I stopped eating red meat, I stopped eating white bread, processed foods, fast food, eating and drinking dairy, bringing junk food in the home. I literally stopped doing it. And let me tell you right now, my friends, stopped also the stress and emotional eating. But every time I was stressed, I'd just go get a pizza because it'd make me feel better. I thought, okay, if I need to stop doing all this because this is what's causing me to gain the weight, this is what's causing me to be sluggish and, and have inflammation and aches and pains in my body, and this is why I'm depleted, why I don't have energy, I'm not giving my body life, what do I need to start doing? So I, I realized I need to start juicing and eating raw fruits and vegetables. I need to start eating clean every three hours. I started drinking water and green tea, like I'm drinking right now, some coconut water. You might have heard me just take a drink. I'm drinking, I started drinking coffee in moderation only. No sugar added, no creams and all that stuff. Now remember, I used to drink at least one to two white chocolate mochas a day from Starbucks. I assure you I haven't had one in literally years, my friends. Also, um, Started exercising every day, at least 20 minutes of exercise, eating more greens and salads, buying only organic white meat. Listen, you talk about a shift. You go back and look at what I had to stop doing, what I had to start doing. That was a major, major shift and change. Started living by a meal plan, lived by a menu. Okay? And then also I realized, okay, Matt, good to fix the physical. Let's talk about the emotional. And I realized I had to let go of the bitterness, the anger, the resentment, the unforgiveness, the depression, the guilt, the negative thinking, the stress, the fear, the anxiety. Wouldn't it be cool if you guys could get that out of your life? Wouldn't it be cool if you could stop feeling depressed, stop feeling guilty, and stop the negative thinking? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be amazing to get to the place in your life where... You had this. So I started living in the moment, like literally living in the moment. I started laughing. I mean, I realized back in the day before I made these shifts, I didn't laugh much. I was tense. I was pushing. I was grinding. I was hustling. And I started enjoying life, having fun, being playful, forgiving people that hurt me. I let it all go. I literally let it all go. And it was the most freeing feeling in the world. Started thinking positive. Now I drive people nuts because they're like, dude, you're the most positive person I've ever met. And I really am. I'm kind of dancing as I'm talking about this right now because I'm feeling so good. I'm just so happy to be alive, baby. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to keep this webinar-ish, but I'm excited. Uh, started practicing gratitude, speaking positive affirmations, surrounding myself with happy people. I noticed when I made these shifts, I stopped hanging out with the people that were always in a bad mood. Started hanging out with people that were abundant and happy. And, and, and then I started having like a good sense of humor, which was so important. Now, real quick, 
I want you to do this. I actually want you to sit down and do these exercises. I couldn't give them all to you for the sake of time, but I gave you a few. I did it in the area of my finances, my relationships as a dad, and my health, and my business. I want you to get away. It's worth it. Give yourself a day to go get truly clear on all of these answers. Now, second thing I had to do is restore. It's one thing to get your focus. Now I had to go to work and really fix some things. Now my past, I had to lose 40 pounds and get healthy so that I could be the, day, the, the dad that Caleb needed me to be. But thankfully I restored my friends and the fact that I was 40 pounds and overweight is a distant memory because look at me now. I'm 40 and looking good, baby. I've written two books about health and juice and I've helped over nine people lose 100 pounds the healthy way and over 400 people lose over 40 pounds the healthy way without dieting, taking pills or starving themselves. And I've also inspired hundreds of thousands of people to start juicing and living a healthy lifestyle. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. Talk about restoring. And you might be sitting there thinking, yeah, but you don't know. I do know, guys. I know how far I was from freedom and happiness and peace. I know. I know how, I know the steps I had to take. It was, it was, a, it was a year or two of working on me. But man, am I so glad I did. Case in point, look at my friend Jerry, right? When he came to me, Jerry, look at him. He was overweight. He was battling depression and taking medications, and he reached out to us for coaching. He was in a desperate place. He really wanted to change, and he went through our 90-day process called My Health 90, and he committed. He went all in to living a healthy lifestyle and mastering his daily habits. So when he came to us, he was overwhelmed. He didn't believe he could eat healthy. He didn't believe he could make it a lifestyle because that's what we promote. Well, let's take a look. It's Jerry after 90 days. He lost 53 pounds of healthy weight, took his confidence back, and he's got joy, and look at him. I mean, it's amazing. Now, Jerry is coaching and training other people to lose weight and get their health back. So there's Jerry before, and there's Jerry after. So my tip for you, I want you to write down a list of all of your regrets. Everything that you regret, I want you to write it down. If you regret drinking so much, if you regret yelling at your kids, if you regret that you haven't taken your wife on a date, if you regret that you uh, let go of your sexiness and you've gained weight, if you regret that you know, you, you, you've wasted your 30s, whatever it is, I want you to write it all down. It's very, very important to make a list of your regrets because I'll tell you what happened for me. Talk about restoration. Is my life changed when I made this list? I sat down and I literally visualized what I would regret at Caleb's 18th birthday party. And man, did it ever change. One of the things that I would regret is that I would miss his games. So I made up my mind, there he is, look at that. I mean, you know what it meant for him, no matter how he did at the plate, to be able to look over and see his dad. And I actually started coaching his baseball team. And after making a list of all the regrets and realized, you know what, when Caleb Turtz, I, I visualized, I gotta take you back to that actually for a minute. I actually sat down and I visualized Caleb's 18th birthday party, but it did, I didn't just think about it. I went deep. I played the whole story. I played the entire night out. And I played it out to this. I played it out to the night ended, Caleb's 18, and we just had a big old, big old party. Lots of family and friends and food and fun and laughter. And I remember... In that vision, Caleb coming up to me at the end of the night, everybody was gone and saying, Dad, I love you, man. This was amazing. Thank you so much uh, for doing this. Um, man, I'm going to go hang out with my friends, Pops. I love you, though, and I'll see you a little bit later. And I remember him leaving, walking out that door. And in my, in my visualization, I remember sitting down and I remember just thinking, wow, 18 years went by just like that.
I remember sitting there feeling plagued with regret. So after that, I literally made a list. What would I regret at Caleb's 18th birthday? And I literally have been living every moment of every day to make sure that when he actually does turn 18, that there's no regrets. And I can tell you this, speaking of no regrets, I'm so glad because I used to miss baseball games. I went to most of them. There'd be times I'd be on the road speaking and I'd miss, but I'll never forget nine years old, third base because I was coaching. I was third base coach and Caleb was up to bat. He swings and he hit the ball so hard. And it actually went over the fence. It was his first ever home run. I'll never forget him like running around first base. And the first thing he did, I mean, I can see his face. I can, I can see it right now. I can see like that look from first base over to third base. It was amazing. Oh, my goodness. So the fact that I've missed a few of his games is a, is, a, is a distant memory because it doesn't matter how bad you failed in the past, you can begin again now. You know, me, your kids and your family would, 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 would totally heal if you would just start now, even if, you, even if you failed so bad and made so many mistakes. I want you to know you can restore your family. And so that leads me to this. You have to apologize to the people that you hurt. And I'm going to give you a real quick four keys to a real apology. Number one is ask forgiveness from your family and friends and, and, and yourself. Forgive yourself and give a sincere, heartfelt apology by not defending yourself or making excuses. Don't be afraid to look at them and just tell them you were wrong. Then you got to forgive yourself and let it go and then refuse to dwell on your regrets by continuously reliving them in your mind or conversations. You should take a screenshot of this because if you do these four things, if you go ask forgiveness from your family and friends and yourself, it's going to free you. Forgiveness equals freedom. Now, the third tip is to make a list of the lessons that you learned and then apply those lessons by getting a coach or a mentor or somebody who will help keep you accountable. Now, last but not least is relax. See, first I had to refocus. Secondly, I had to restore. And the third thing I had to do is learn how to relax, how to rest, how to retreat, how to take a vacation. Well, let me give you a story about a friend of mine named Melissa. Sweet, unbelievable lady, just a doll. Came to me for coaching. I did one-on-one -on -one coaching with her. It was so much fun, but she had a smoking addiction, a private secret smoking addiction because of the deep fear-based thinking and all her relationships were failing. I'll never forget our first call. She was battling with self-limiting beliefs and was very tense because life was not working for her the way she wanted it to. She was exhausted and frustrated and unf In fact, how many of you have ever felt this way? How many of you have ever felt like, you know what, I would love to learn how to relax and not always be so tense and not always be so stressed and not always plagued by the past and not always like worried. You know, how many of you like to relax about your business, about your clients, about your family, about your future? Well, she did. We went to work. We broke those self-limiting beliefs. We taught her how to relax and release the tension, how to break the fear-based thinking and how to position herself to do what she really wanted and that's go into business for herself, leave the job she hated and how to um, find her soulmate. Well, in this beautiful four months later, there she is on her honeymoon after falling in love. She hadn't smoked in eight months and she's living her life with complete peace and fulfillment. Met her soulmate after eight weeks of coaching with me and married him four months later. 
And now she's pursuing her passion and becoming a certified life coach of Tony Robbins. Is that amazing or what? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? How many of you would love right now to have this happen in your life? Well, first thing you have to do is you have to make it a priority to relax and enjoy life again. So I'm going to give you some activities that I started doing, that we started doing as a family, that I started to make a priority. Yoga. Yoga? Are you kidding me? Who would have ever thought in 10 million years that I would do yoga? First of all, the thought of slowing down for an hour without my phone felt like absolute torture. But I did, and it was life-changing. Now I do yoga every day. Meditation? Oh, meditation. Again, that's a time waster. Who wants to just sit still? And I learned how to meditate, and therefore, because I learned how to meditate, I sleep better, I feel better, I have more energy. Started getting good sleep. I never used to sleep good. I'd sleep three to four hours. I'd be sporadic. Now I literally fall asleep at 10.30 at night. I wake up at 4.45 in the morning, and I feel amazing. I get a good seven hours of sleep at least. You know, sometimes I say wake up, you know, I get up at 4.45. Sometimes I'm asleep at 9.30 or 10. But I always make sure to get at least seven hours. Listen to live music. Get a massage. Ladies, a pedicure as well. Spend time out in nature. I started going to the beach more. I started going to the mountains, hiking. Physical exercise became very relaxing to me. Living in the moment. Journaling. And if nothing else motivates you guys, have more sex, will you? I mean, it, it can totally relax you and help you emotionally, mentally, and physically. Now, that ought to motivate you guys, right? So, here's a tip. Invest in your family while relaxing by reading good relationship books or going to a family seminar. So, another thing we did is we started having a family night once a week. Um, Caleb and I. Now remember, I would literally spend time with him from the time he, he uh, got out of school until he went to bed. But we actually had a designated family night. and We did something kind of cool. We created this family fun box. There it is. I said, okay, Caleb, we're going to make a list. I'm a big list maker, if y'all couldn't tell by now. I'd make a big list and I'd say, okay, I want you to write down everything that you love to do. And he did. And we, I went and bought ping pong balls, got some Sharpie pins and wrote it down. And I said, okay, every Monday night, every Monday night, you're going to be able to pick a ball. And whatever you pick, we're going to do that as a family. Man, that was fun. Uh, tip number three is, hey, get out of town more and take more family vacations. I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you a few family vacation rules to live by. That's Caleb and I ice skate in Central Park at Christmas time. Man, was that fun. Such a memory. So have fun on vacation, really. You're there to have fun. Enjoy it. Have some fun. Make some memories. Laugh a lot. You know, uh, start new traditions. Unplug from business. Don't talk about business. Sleep in. Get the get out of your routine. Get, you know, I was getting ready to say eat the heck out of ice cream, and that's true. You know, in other words, look, have some fun, take some pictures and videos, and just make a lot of memories. And for example, Caleb and I started going and getting a cabin every year at Christmas time. We would literally go. Sometimes we'd spend almost up to three weeks. Guys, do you have any idea the thought of a three week vacation? I would have never in a million years thought I could do that. I'm glad I do it. We've made, we've had some of our best talks. So Caleb wrote his book in that cabin right there. We, we sit up late at night in the hot tub. We make Christmas cookies. We watch Christmas movies. We go hike every morning. We sleep in. We just talk. We laugh. There's our cabin right there. Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Here we are. With Travis and Amber, we always go to Washington, D.C. for Thanksgiving, New York City. There's Caleb and I hiking, a lot of memories out in the woods, canoeing, just doing fun stuff, going out four-wheeling. It's all about making memories. Uh, there we are. We go every year to, to Canada for the summer for like, you know, a couple of weeks and we four-wheel. We build fires. We just hang out in nature. Does that look amazing? Does that look cool? Does that look refreshing? How many guys sitting there listening to this are thinking, 
I need more of this. <laughs> I know the feeling. So real quick, number one, you can go on a cruise, you can go to a cabin, you can go camping, or you can go to a resort. You know, go on a retreat or something like that. So take your family on a retreat. Now, Caleb and I have what we call refresh your family retreats. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to hear more about that for sure. But it's definitely an awesome opportunity to refocus, to restore, and ultimately to relax. Now, today I promised this. I promised you that I would show you how to have massive success in business or career without neglecting your health, even if that seems impossible, okay? I promise you how to spend more quality time with your family without feeling guilty about work that still needs to be done. I promise you I would show you how to live with the deepest level of peace and get more rest and take more vacations, have more energy and still be productive at work. I promise I would show you how to create an atmosphere of your home so that your children feel confident, comfortable, and safe. I promised you that I would show you how to do it all without feeling like you're wasting time, losing money, or neglecting people that depend on you to deliver and produce. And I proved it to you. I proved it to you by showing you the three shifts that I made, such as refocused, I restored the broken places, and I learned how to relax, I lost the 40 pounds, I got out of debt, I started a business that gave me freedom, I now homeschool my son, we spend every day together, we travel the world together, we have some of the best memories that any human being can possibly have. Now, let me ask you a question right now. 